follow my friends and let's start right away with the Kherson direction where the Russians are gradually losing control over the left bank while the Ukrainian armed forces successfully expand their foothold. And the Russians already admit that they are suffering significant losses and they cannot dislodge the Ukrainian armed forces from their positions on the left bank. The epic battle for the village of Krenki, according to the words of Rybar, has already grown into an epic battle for the surrounding forests. Although just last Friday, the same Rybar wrote that the Kokel had already been knocked out of the forest and driven back to the broken village. We do not blame Rybar, as well as all other channels, for the fact that for two days they spread false information about our successes in Krinka and thereby instilled in people false hope for the imminent destruction of the enemy in this settlement. Overall, as it seems, the Russians are forcing attempts to conceal the fears of the Russian army, but the truth cannot be hidden. Moreover, yesterday there were new explosions in Skadovsk. It appears that another occupant base has been destroyed, but the Russians are unlikely to admit it. In the Zaporizhia direction, the situation remains tense. The Ukrainian side claims uh, that as a result of tactical combat actions, the Ukrainian armed forces have managed to improve their positions and advance in the Robotina area. Unfortunately, there is no official confirmation of this information yet. The occupiers continue shelling, but there is not much activity in this section of the front for now. In the Vuhledar direction, after significant advances closer to Zolotanyeva, the occupiers gained confidence and continue attacks towards Staromayorsky and Zolotanyeva. Shelling along the entire front line persists. Looking at the geolocation map of Ukrainian armed forces Shelling, it's noticeable that today there is not the highest activity in the Vuhledar direction. The main focus of the Ukrainian armed forces strikes is concentrated on the Kherson direction and the Donetsk region. This is where most of the Shelling occurs. In the Avdiivka direction, Despite the occupies minor successes on the northern flank and near the industrial zone, they cannot achieve a complete encirclement of the city. They still haven't managed to enter Avdivka itself. The Ukrainian armed forces are fiercely defending every inch, trying to secure this crucial point. The destruction of Russians in this section of the front continues intensively. The Kremlin uh, seems indifferent to the human cost as they continue mobilizing reserves and launching attacks. Today, the Russians are advancing in the Novobakhmutivka, Opetne, Severne and near Tonenka areas, attempting to encircle Avdiivka at any cost. Battles also continue in the industrial zone. The general staff reports repelling 21 attacks in the past day. The Russians haven't achieved success and the front line remains unchanged. In the Bakhmut direction, there is high activity. And the Russians are advancing in the Bogdanivka area, resuming battles near Ivanivka and Khromova. It's reported that the fights are occurring on the outskirts of the village. Battles for Kvashivka and Andreevka also continue. In the past day, 26 attacks were reported, all of which were repelled and the front line remains unchanged. In the Krumina and Siversk areas, the situation is heating up. Shelling and periodic attacks in the forests are reported. According to the general staff, the occupies have initiated offensive actions in three directions – Terne, Yampolivka and Zarichne, pushing the Ukrainian armed forces closer to the river. However, the Russians haven't achieved success and the front line remains unchanged.
In the Svatova area, the occupies attempted to advance on Stelmachivka and then on Novoselivske, but faced a strong counteraction. Now they are back in a defensive position and there is minimal shelling. It seems that there are no major objectives set by the Russians in this direction at the moment. In the Kupin's direction, the situation is intense as the Russian command aims to capture Kupin's. Despite their attempts, they haven't achieved success and the front line remains unchanged after a day of fighting. The battles for Sankivka persist, accompanied by heavy shelling along the entire front line. Meanwhile, Ukraine is experiencing severe weather conditions with heavy snowfall, freezing rain and stormy winds primarily uh, affecting the southern regions. Several regions have declared an orange level of danger. Movement on 14 roads has been blocked and power outages are reported in 16 regions. According to President Volodymyr Zelensky, as of the morning, around 2,000 settlements are without electricity. He also informed that operational headquarters have been deployed and are active in the Odessa, Mykolaiv, Kirovograd, Cherkasy and Kyiv regions. Dear Ukrainians, a few results of the day. First, since this morning I have been receiving reports on the situation in our regions affected by the bad weather. Almost 1,500 settlements in 17 regions were cut off from electricity. Power engineers are working everywhere to restore electricity supply. As soon as it is possible, electricity will be restored in every city and village. At the moment, hundreds of people and hundreds of vehicles of the state emergency service alone are working around the clock. The National Police and the National Guard are also helping. Public utilities are involved as well. I am grateful to everyone in the regional and local authorities who promptly joined in to help people and gives results. In every community, it is important to do everything possible to avoid casualties due to bad weather. Unfortunately, as of now, there are casualties. The highest number is in Odessa region, five people died. My condolences to the families and friends. At least 19 people were injured. Everyone has been provided with the necessary assistance. Operational headquarters at both the national and regional levels will continue to work until the situation is normalized. It's also reported that due to the severe weather conditions in Odessa, three people have frozen to death. Also, retired British General Sir uh, Richard Barons made an interesting statement at the forum in Lucerne. The only way Ukraine wins is if we now mobilize our industry and our will behind that. And do not tell me it's unaffordable because you represent an economy of 15 trillion euros a year and I can feed the Ukrainian military on about 75 billion euros a year for two or three years and I can make them win. This is not about affordability. This is about choice and competence. And isn't it a bargain if we can defeat Russia's objections to you on a war in Ukraine where you only spend money you do not spend your children? Bargain of the century. And that's all from me. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to stay updated on all the latest news. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.